Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the ninth lecture of module 2 of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Before we start this lecture, uh, let me take you through what we have discussed in the previous lecture. Uh, what we have done in the previous lecture is that we have defined what are known as weakly dominated action and strongly dominated actions. And we have discussed some properties of this weak domination and strong domination. In particular, we have said that uh, if we have Nash equilibrium, then in the Nash equilibrium, uh, strongly dominated actions are not played. As far as weakly dominated ac actions are concerned, uh, in Nash equilibrium which are not strict Nash equilibrium, that is non-strict Nash equilibrium, it is possible that weakly dominated actions are played. We have shown an example of that. And in Nash equilibrium, uh, which is a strict Nash equilibrium, we have shown that uh, weakly dominated actions are not played. So, these are the properties. Uh, today, we shall start from there and we have we shall be discussing some of the exercises related to weakly dominated actions. <coughs> so, uh, one exercise that we shall do today is whether it is possible to have a single Nash equilibrium in which weakly dominated actions our plate. Notice we have already seen that uh, if weakly dominated actions are ever played in uh, Nash equilibrium, it has to be a non-strict Nash equilibrium. So, this Nash equilibrium that uh, we are going to construct here uh, is going to be a Nash equilibrium which is not a strict Nash equilibrium. But let us see if that can be constructed and I have constructed the following game. There can be other cases also in which there is a single Nash equilibrium and that single Nash equilibrium uh, in that single Nash equilibrium the actions of the players uh, are weakly dominated. So, let us suppose there are two players one and two. One has three actions u m suppose b and 2 has 3 actions l c r and following are the payoffs Now, if this is the game, then uh, notice that uh, the Nash equilibrium in this game is just one, there is only one Nash equilibrium. Which is at M C. This is a Nash equilibrium because uh, given that player 2 is playing C, uh, if player 1 plays M, he gets 1. If he deviates, he gets either 1 by playing U or he gets B, uh, is he gets 0 by playing B. So, he cannot be 
uh, doing better than what he is doing by playing M. From player 2's point of view, similarly, if he plays C, he gets 1. If he plays L, he gets again 1. If he plays R, he gets 0. So, he cannot be better off. We can check other uh, action pair of actions and we shall see that in each of the uh, pairs of actions, the, uh, the actions are such that they do not constitute Nash equilibrium. So, this is the unique Nash equilibrium. At the same time, let us also see that what is the action M for 1? Uh, for 1, action M is such that M is weakly dominated by action U. How do I say that? Because if player 2 plays L, U is better than M. If player 2 plays C, U and M give them the same payoff, give him the same payoff. If 2 plays R, again U and M giving player 1 the same payoff. So, U is weakly dominating M. Similarly, for player 2, uh, if I consider L and C, I shall see that uh, L is, is weakly dominating C. So, C is a weakly dominated action for player 2 weakly dominated by L, which means that both M and C are weakly dominated, whereas the only in the only Nash equilibrium of the game, both of them are being, being played. So, here we have an example where uh, players have weakly dominated actions and they are being played in the unique Nash equilibrium that the game has. <clears throat> now, so that was one case uh, of uh, and one example of weakly dominated actions and how they are they can be played. Uh, one illustration or one example that we shall do today related to weakly dominated action is the case of voting. <coughs> and suppose yet the game is the following that there are two candidates in the field. Suppose A and B and uh, how many uh, voters there are? Suppose there are n voters who can vote either for A or for B. n is odd and uh, abstention is not an option. So, everybody must vote and it so happens that uh, number of people who uh, like A over B is more than the number of people who like B over A. So, A has more supporters. <coughs> now, if uh, there is no abstention, then obviously there is a clear winner and because uh, number of voters is odd. So, either A is going to win or B is going to win. Uh, it may seem that A is always going to win, uh, but that is not the case. It may happen that even the A voters are supporters of A are voting for B and uh, consequently B will win in that case. And so, what are how are we, are we going to set this up as a game theoretic problem? First, the players, the voters, voters are the players here, n in number, two actions, voting for A or voting for B. 
these are the only two actions preferences how are they defined well uh, this is quite uh, logical and intuitive uh, in all the profiles uh, where a is winning the voters are indifferent between them uh, if you remember the preferences are defined over the action profiles so action profile here will be uh, an element vector uh, each element representing the action of one player so it will look like uh, the following suppose a a b a like that so there will be n such elements now from this it may happen that the number of a's is less than the number of b's for all such profiles the voters are indifferent because in all, all those cases b is winning so if b is winning it does not matter for a particular voter whether he himself is voting for b or someone else is voting for b or by how much margin b is winning those things are immaterial for any voter as long as a particular candidate is winning uh, players are indifferent between those profiles so it does not matter by by what method or by what margin uh, a particular candidate is winning and it it so happens that uh, the players who like to see a win are more than the players who like to see b win so that is the the story main story so what the result is that result is that uh, for a supporter of A or suppose B, uh, voting for A weakly dominates voting for B. So, if I am a supporter of A, uh, it is a weakly dominant action, weakly dominant action for me to vote for A than to vote for B because there are only two actions to consider uh, and vice versa. If I am a voter for B, it is weakly dominating to vote for B than vote for A. And uh, what is the reason for this? <coughs> look at this game from any individual's point of view suppose i is an individual a player a voter is supporter of a now if i supports a then what can be the profiles of actions of other players except i now, if I leave I out, then it may so happen that uh, in the rest of the player's actions, there might be a tie. Now, if there is a tie, uh, there is a tie when leaving aside. i's vote this is this tie is crucially dependent on the fact that n is odd uh, so if n is odd then if i take one person out now i have even number of voters if i have even number of voters there are two candidates there can be a tie now if there is a tie then what is best for i in that case voting for a is strictly better than voting for b
strictly preferable to voting for B. Now, if I have to prove that voting for A is weakly dominating over voting for B, then I have to show that in rest of the cases also uh, A voting for A is better than voting for B or the person is indifferent between voting for A and voting for B. Now, how can I show that? What can be the other cases? Again, if I leave I out uh, and if I consider the voting pattern of other voters, what can be the other cases? The other cases could be that one of the candidates A or B is winning by two or more votes. A or B is winning by two or more votes. In particular, the margin uh, between these two candidates A and B can be either 2, it can be 4, it can be 6 like that. It can never be an odd number because we have even number of voters. Now, whatever be the case, if one of the candidates uh, is winning by 2 or more votes, notice that vote of this this player i is becoming immaterial. Uh, for example, it may happen that A is winning by 2 votes. In that case, if he votes for B, A is still winning because the now only the margin between A and B is reducing by 1 vote uh, and A is still winning. If I votes for A, then the margin rises, but A still wins. So, as far as the outcome is concerned, uh, it is not making any difference. I's vote does not make any difference if the margin between A and B is 2 or 4 or 6 like that and vice versa in the sense that if B is winning by 2 or 4 or 6 votes, uh, then I does not like that case, but he cannot change the outcome either. If he votes for A, B still wins by uh, maybe a margin of 1 or 3 or 5 like that. So, in such cases voting for A is as good as voting for B. So, he is indifferent between these two actions voting for A or voting for B. And this, this basically 1 and 2, this case 1 and case 2 exhaust all the possibilities for I to vote. Uh, and if that is the case, then we find definitely that uh, action A that is voting for A is weakly dominating for A weakly dominates voting for B. So, that is one result that we have and this is for the supporter of A. For B supporters, voting for B will be uh, such that it weakly dominates voting for A. So, that is that. Uh, another sort of voting which we shall call collective decision making is something which we seek to dis discuss today. And uh, here it is not that people are voting for candidates, uh, people are deciding to, uh, people are trying to decide on a common policy. So, this is trying 
to decide a common policy. And who are these people? Suppose there are n people, n is again odd. People who are deciding on a common policy. And this policy is such that it can be represented by a number. For the, uh, for the ease of, for the ease of visualization, let us suppose this number is a positive or minimum it can be 0. For example, let us take uh, the case of defense expenditure by a government. Now, people have their own ideas about what this value could, could ideally be. Uh, for example, someone who is more nationalistic, more rightist kind of person, he may like to have a higher value of this uh, variable that is the defense expenditure than someone who is a more liberal, more left oriented person. So, uh, every person in this story has an ideal value of this number which he likes to see as the common policy. Suppose there is an individual I, I belongs to this set of n people and his favorite is given by x i star. So, x i star is, is his favorite number. He likes that the common policy evolved by this entire set of people decided by the entire set, set of people be closest to x i star and this happens for everyone. So, every person 1, 2, etcetera, etcetera n person, every one of them has an ideal or what he likes to see uh, as the common policy. These are given by the stars. Now, obviously, this, these numbers can differ and if these numbers differ, then how this community of n people uh, get to decide what will be the common policy because that common policy can be a single number. In that case, what it does, the, the mechanism that it evolves is that everyone, every one of these n people is asked to announce what is the number that he likes to see. So, every one is to announce his or her uh, number. And let us call these numbers as uh, x1, x2, dot 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 xn. So, these are the announcements made by uh, each player. And uh, based on these announcements made by each player, uh, the common policy is decided. How is it decided? The median of x 1, x 2, dot 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 x n is the policy. All right. So, people announce their numbers and then the median of that those numbers is taken to be the uh, policy of the of the group. <clears throat> now, uh, just to clarify what a median is, uh, median is the middlemost number. Uh, suppose I have a set of numbers, suppose uh, 1, 5, 9, uh, 20, 21. So, these are the 5 numbers, then after I have got these numbers, I arrange them in an ascending order like I have done here. And then I pick up the middlemost. Here the middlemost is the third number. So, 9 is the median. 
So, middlemost uh, number is uh, how I pick the number. Uh, if there are n numbers and n is odd, then how do I decide which is the middlemost? I take n plus 1 divided by 2 because here there are 5 numbers. So, 5 plus 1 divided by 2 is 3. So, third number is 9. <coughs> if there are odd numbers, sorry, if there are even uh, numbers like 1, 5, 9, 20, then there is not a single middlemost number. There are two middlemost numbers. 5 and 9. So, in this case median is both. So, there are two medians here, both are medians. So, here the, uh, the formula is what? Suppose, th th this is n, then I take n divided by 2 or n divided by 2 plus 1. Uh, that will give me the serial number of the median of the medians. Here it is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2 and uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus 1 that is 3, 2 and 3, third and second and third numbers are the medians. <coughs> so, that is the definition, uh, the idea of median. <coughs> Uh, now, if this is the setup that uh, there are n people, they want to decide on a common policy and each of them has a favorite policy and each of them will like to have uh, uh, the common policy of the group to be closest to his favorite policy. Uh, then they will announce some numbers and the median of those numbers will be taken to be the common policy. So, that is the setup. So, here basically if I have to set up in game theoretic terms n people actions So, anyone can announce a particular number, that number can be any number, uh, it can be any positive or 0 non negative number basically. It can be negative also, but I am just keeping the structure simple. And uh, what is the preference? I prefers the action profile A to A dashed if the median policy in A is closer to x i star then the median under a test. So, basically preferences as uh, always uh, depend on the action profiles. Uh, so, if i is given two action profiles a and a dashed, then how does he compare? Which one does he like better than the other? And the answer is the following that i likes a to a dash that is he likes a better than a dashed. If in a the median that is chosen in a is closer to x i star, x i star is his favorite number, his favorite policy, then the median policy which will be decided if a dashed is the profile. 
So, if A dash is the profile, the median is going to be further away uh, from X i star than the median under A. In that case, I is preferring A to A dash. So, this is the setup in game theoretic terms. And the claim is that again it is related to the idea of weak domination that for each player for each player i suppose announcing x i star weakly dominates all other weakly dominates all other actions. Now, uh, notice this uh, is a more uh, this is a more strong result than what we have seen before. In the previous exercise, there were two actions and we saw that one action was uh, weakly dominating the other. Here one is saying that uh, for each player uh, for example, player i, he has this action x i star that weakly dominates over all other possible actions that he can take. Uh, so, it is better, weakly better for him to take this action x i star, x i star mind you is the uh, favorite policy, action, the, the, the true policy that he likes to see uh, than all other actions that he can possibly take. <clears throat> so, uh, this essentially means this result basically is suggesting that in such setup where people are asked to tell their uh, preferences and we take the median of these preferences, uh, there is an incentive for people to reveal their true types. There is an incentive for them uh, to tell the truth. Uh, in many cases it may happen as we shall see later on, uh, in many other setups it may happen that people do not tell the truth, they want to influence the ultimate decision of the community and that is why they tell something which is not their true types before, so as to make the final decision closest to their true decision. But here we see that uh, that is not the case, that uh, if people are asked to tell their types. Uh, there is an incentive, there can be cases uh, where uh, people will tell their true types. And what is the proof for this? <coughs> the way we approach this problem is the following. Suppose I take I out, any player i is any player, I am taking him out, I know that he has this favorite policy x i star and uh, the, ac the announcement he makes is generally generically given by x i. Now, if I take i out and I take the announcements made by other players and I arrange them in an ascending order. So, this is how they are arranged x 1, x 2 dot 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 x n. So, there are n minus 1 elements here in this entire series. Now, in this uh, in this vector or in this series of elements x 1, x 2, x n etcetera, uh, there are two middlemost elements because here uh, all since there are n minus 1 elements here and n is odd. So, that means n minus 1 is even. So, there are two middlemost elements here uh, and what will be their serial number that I can uh, find out 
by dividing n minus 1 by 2 because let me take an example. Suppose I have 5 elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, if I take 1 out then the middlemost will be 2 and 3. Now, how do I find out 2 and 3 from some general by some general formula from the number 5? What I do is I take 5 minus 1 divided by 2 and 5 plus 1 divided by 2. So, I get 2 and 3 so these numbers. So, similar that is the same case we are doing here. Uh, since to begin with there are n players, I am taking 1 out. So, there are n minus 1 players. The middlemost most will be the serial number n minus 1 divided by 2 and n plus 1 divided by 2. And suppose the announcement made by these two, uh, these two players are x under bar and x over bar. And so, there are these people are somewhere here. Now, what I am going to do now is that I am going to consider all possible cases of location of x i star, uh, because i sorry i has a favorite policy which is x i star, but x i star can be any value. It can be less than x 1, it can be more than x n and it can lie anywhere in between. That is one thing and secondly, I am going to consider first case 1 is that suppose x i star is less than x i. So, which means that he is considering player i is considering that he is going to make an announcement which is x i which is strictly greater than x i star. Then I am going to show that uh, this kind of consideration whether I shall make an announcement greater than x i star which is my favorite policy is going to be weakly dominated by x i star. Basically, it means that if I consider making an announcement which is more than my favorite policy, that announcement is either uh, going to give me less payoff than announcing my true favorite policy or that announcement is going to give me the same payoff that I will get if I announce my favorite policy. And this is case 1 just uh, and there will be a case 2 where x i star is greater than x i. If I can prove that in both these cases uh, x i star uh, weakly dominates x i then I am done. Then I am done in the sense that which means that no matter what announcement other announcement I take uh, uh, announcing my true type that is x i star is the weakly dominant action. It weakly dominates, it weakly dominates over other actions. Now, so let us first take case 1. Now, remember there is there are all this x 1, x 2, etcetera, etcetera. Somewhere here there is x under bar, there is some x over bar and here there is suppose x n, they are in ascending order. So, here is x under bar, here is x over bar. <coughs> First take the case that x i star which I know is less than x i is less than x under bar. So, they are somewhere here to the left of uh, x under bar. Let us consider the case of equal to also it does not matter. <coughs> now, in this case what are the payoffs of player 1 
if phi announces x i star and if he announces x i. If uh, he announces x i star which is suppose here and the alternative is he is announcing something here. In either of the cases x under bar x over bar were at the middlemost before he made his announcement. Now, when he is making his announcement, his announcements are to the left of x under bar, which means that this becomes the median, x under bar becomes the median. And it does not matter really whether he announces x i star or x i, because in both the cases uh, x under bar remains the middlemost. Uh, and so, in both these cases that, uh, sorry, in this case where x i star is strictly less than x i which is less than equal to x under bar, uh, i is indifferent between this action and x i. So, this is what I get from here this is just A. What is B? Well, it can very have well very well happen that x i star is I know less than x i, but this x i is somewhere here. So, that is x i is greater than x under bar and is less than x over bar. Now, what happens? If I makes the announcement x i star, so he is making some announcement here to the left of x, x under bar, then x under bar becomes the median of the entire population. If I makes the announcement x i here somewhere here, then x i itself becomes the median of the entire population. And which is better having a median x under bar is better or having a median at x i which is greater than x under bar is better. If you remember the preference was such that uh, any player likes that action profile where the median is closer to his favorite policy. So, that means that in the action profile where x under bar is being chosen as the median that is preferable to him, which means that uh, in this case where x i is greater than x under bar and less than uh, x over bar uh, for player i announcing x i star is preferable, uh, because that is giving him uh, x under bar as the policy than announcing x i. So, So, here I have a case where announcing your true type is strictly better. Let us take case C. <coughs> case C is the case where suppose x i star is here. Suppose x i uh, the, the announcement that he is planning to make can be greater than x over bar also, it is, it is a very high value or it can be equal to x over bar does not matter. In that case which is the better action <coughs> announcing x i star or announcing x i. Uh, here also we shall see that announcing x i star is strictly preferable than announcing x i. Why? Because if he announces x i star like before, uh, x under bar becomes the median. And if he announces x i which is either x equal to x over bar or greater than x over bar, then the median becomes x over bar. So, he is to choose whether it is better to have x over bar as the policy 
final policy of the community or x under bar as the final policy of the community. And since the difference between x i star and x under bar is less than the difference between x i star and x over bar, uh, it is better for him to announce x i star. So, here x i star is preferable to announcing x i which is greater than x over 1. Now, in all these three cases what we have done is that uh, we have considered uh, that x i star the value of x i star is such that it is less than x under bar. But that is not the only possible case to have. It may have happen that I can take other cases of x i star for example, uh, x under bar this is another case d. In this case notice if player i announces x i star uh, then that itself becomes the median uh, uh, because then this is the middle most. On the other hand if he announces x i again x i will fall between x under bar and x over bar. So, that itself becomes the median. And uh, if the choice is between x i star and x i obviously x i star is better because the final policy is just your own favorite policy that is the best that you can do. So, here x i star is preferable to x i. So, here I am taking the other case where x i can be greater than x over bar also. Here also uh, it is similar if player i announces x i star, x i star itself becomes the policy of the group. Whereas, if player i announces x i, uh, x over bar becomes the middlemost and that becomes the policy of the group. Uh, so, obviously, player i will like to have x i star as the uh, policy of the group and so, uh, x i star in this case is preferable to x i. We are more or less uh, at the end of this uh, mm. discussion. The last case I need to consider is this one. both of them are greater than x over bar. In this case it does not really matter whatever i announces whether this is x i star or x i x over bar becomes a median which means that i is indifferent. So, I have considered all the cases where x i is greater than x i star that is player i is considering something some announcement which is strictly greater than what is what he is his true type is and I see that x i star is weakly dominating over x i. He can do either worse by announcing x i or he can do uh, as much as good uh, as he is doing after x i star. So, from this uh, x i star is weakly dominating x i and similarly the case of x i being less than uh, x i star this is case 2 will be similar. There also I shall get the same thing that x i star weakly dominates x i. 
So, from this both of them co combining together we shall reach the conclusion that uh, announcing one's true type is weakly dominating over announcing some other policy for each of the players. So, th that is more or less the end of the lecture. What we have done in this class, in this lecture is that we have, uh, we have analyzed some of the exercises which uh, use the case of weak domination. We have uh, taken the case of voting and taken the case of collective decision making. Uh, that is the end of the lecture. Thank you. Define strictly dominated actions with examples. Strictly dominated action for player I, AI dash is strictly dominated by another action a i double dash if the following condition has to be satisfied so this is the definition of strictly dominated action symbolically what basically is being said is that a i dashed is worse than a i double dashed for player i no matter what actions the other players are taking. The other players could be taking any random actions does not matter every for every possible vector of actions of other players uh, a i dashed gives this particular individual lower payoff compared to AI double dashed. Examples we can uh, think of the first game that we discussed which is the prisoner's dilemma game. This is the prisoner's dilemma game, these are the payoffs. Now, here uh, there is one weak one strictly dominated action uh, and this strictly dominated action is N C. And which action is strictly dominating this action? It is C. Uh, you can see this very uh, clearly. If player 2 plays C, then for player 1 playing C is better because C is getting him 1, N C is getting him 0. Uh, if player 2 plays N C then, then again for player 1 uh, playing C is better than player 2 uh, playing, playing N C. So, that is why N C is worse no matter what player 2 plays. Define weakly dominated actions with examples. So, weakly dominated actions. So, I am not uh, writing it in detail as I did in the last time is weakly dominated by a i double dash if is for all a not i belonging to a not i and this is for some a not i belonging to a not i. So, for at least for some uh, vector of actions by other players playing a double dashed i is strictly better and for all other vectors uh, it could be uh, at least as good as playing a i dashed. An example here 
here for player uh, 1 a 2 weakly dominates a 1 right 2 is greater than 1 3 is equal to 3 ok last question in the collected decision making game find two Nash equilibria such that in one out in, in, in one the outcome is the median favorite policy in the other it is not. So, collected decision making uh, model if you remember we have to find out one in which uh, median is the Nash equilibrium. Let us sub suppose everyone announces the median favorite position. Okay. In this case the Nash equilibrium is uh, the Nash equilibrium this is a Nash equilibrium because no one can deviate and change the outcome uh, because the choice then becomes M. Uh, so, this is a Nash equilibrium and that is what we had to provide. Another example when it is not suppose everyone announces x 1 star which is the favorite policy of the first player in this case again this is a Nash equilibrium because I cannot change my action and change the outcome, uh, but here what is the outcome outcome is x 1 star uh, and which is not equal to m. So, this is an example that is it. Mm -hmm.